Hi everyone, welcome to this video for the 18th weekend of lockdown in the UK. Um, 18 weeks of working from home. It's been a bit of a revelation really. I, 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 just to prove to myself that it is actually possible to work from home for this length of time and be productive. I'm really fortunate because my company, we've, we've been doing really well. Uh, irrespective of uh, what's been going on in the world, um, you know. Well, some of you guys know I work in kind of science and science funding, European science funding. A lot of our customers are European. Uh, by the systems that we build, cryogenic systems, superconducting magnets, and um, yeah, we've been doing really, really well, much better than I anticipated for obvious reasons. Um, and of course, in the background, the wonderful hobby of shortwave radio, ham radio. Um, has been there to help keep me sane. Um, so this weekend, I'm going to be doing what I said I was going to be doing last weekend, um, and that was monitoring um, four meters. Now I was just monitoring four meters last weekend on my end-fed wire that I put up for top band. Um, this weekend, I'm monitoring four meters or going to be trying to operate on four meters with my four meter coaxial uh, vertical dipole as you can see there so this is the antenna that some of you would have seen I've already posted a video on it um, and I won't go through the whole story again but essentially uh, some of us geeks uh, at Harwell ARS like to sort of talk on the radio uh, and we like to do it sometimes uh, outside of the sort of standard HF skeds uh, that we have on a Wednesday and on a Friday. Uh, and for weeks now, we've kind of been experimenting with the, what is the best band that everybody can work easily and can hear everybody else. So all the usual suspects, well, two meters, 70 stems, 80 meters. Um, top bands are no-no because some of the... Uh, guys at Harwell can't use don't have a top band antenna and um, we could almost get everybody on but not quite uh, and so um, one of the guys at Harwell basically started moaning at me saying you need to get on four meters that's the band where everybody uh, can hear each other so um, I bit the bullet and um, looked online and found a design and um, built it basically very simply from a length of discarded RG58, um, a meter of, of RG58 without the shielding and then a meter with, well just over a meter actually, 1.07 meters. Um, and then I wound an ugly ballon, eight turns on a two inch plastic white piece of waste pipe, soldered an SO239 socket to it, plugged it into my IC7300 and matched it in about two seconds. And uh, what's interesting is that I'm in West Oxfordshire and, my, and the guy that basically had been badgering me to do this, uh, he's down sort of in the Abingdon area, so he's in South Oxfordshire and with five watts TX power, he's, he's copying me 60 over nine, basically full scale. So uh, it, it is working very well. Uh, I've had a bit of a problem with it. It sort of collapsed a couple of times because I'm using one of those, um, fishing poles that you can buy from Decathlon for 12 quid and uh, usual me really sort of lash up get it up quick get the job done get the radio going and um, it sort of collapsed a couple of times and I've had to kind of like then text the guy and say can you get back on four I just want to test my antenna still working but now I've kind of got it up and I think it's sort of a little bit more permanent a bit more robust so it hopefully should stay up so um so yeah so that's four meters um got this 7300 on now as we speak um, I'm monitoring 70.45 megahertz um, this is the frequency that I think this is actually a calling frequency um, but uh, we use this frequency quite a lot and I think with four meters is that um, although it, it, it's very useful for us to uh, talk to each other um, it's it, it's also handy because it's not very busy um, I was listening the other night and there was a comp there was a contest going so of course it was absolutely rammed um, but otherwise I've ne I don't think I've ever heard anyone on it now my friend at Harwell he monitors the four meter calling frequency all the time he also monitors two meters and 70 stems so 
This is the guy that, when there's a sporadic e-lift anywhere, on any band, um, he, this is the guy that knows about it first because he's got these receivers switched on and they're basically just, he's monitoring all day, every day. And uh, he actually sent me a text yesterday to say there'd been a sporadic e-lift. Um, I miss all that stuff because I'm basically working from home and, um, uh, and don't notice. So, um, but anyway, four meters is new now. And I think I explained in my other video that four, it's a combination of two and six, really. You know, when there's a lift, you can work some DX. Um, and uh, it, the, the clarity, actually, of his signal. Uh, well, you, I've, I've done a video, actually, of he and I discussing, well, he giving me some advice on desktop mics. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. And um, monitoring for me is, 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 is boring because you don't, basically just don't hear anything. But I'm going to do that over the weekend and see if I can talk to anybody on four meters bar my uh, uh, counterparts at uh, Harwell, Harwell Amateur Radio Society. So um, give it a go at least. Um, so yeah, and I think as I said, it's, it's, my back garden is actually starting to look a little bit like an antenna farm now, which I think is great. Uh, I'm not sure what my neighbours think, but the people on this side, luckily their house is way over. It's nowhere near mine. It's probably 20, 20 30 metres away. Um, and although these are attached to the back of a fence that borders onto their property, um, I was actually around there the other day admiring their garden they're sort of, of uh, advancing years and they've got an absolutely beautiful garden and um, I was admiring it and um, was there probably for about half an hour chatting to them and nobody mentioned anything so uh, they, they maybe they didn't even notice the extra antenna had gone up hopefully not so um, so there you go um, the other thing I'm gonna be doing this weekend is that I sort of feel like my um, vintage ICOM IC756 has been a little bit neglected of late for obvious reasons really because it sat basically next to that um, hasn't really had a look in and um, I I'm gonna I'm going to have a go with it over over the weekend on um, 20 uh, and 40 meters um, I'm not going to use it for the sked tonight and there doesn't seem much point but um, I, I, it's not a radio thing that I would think I would ever get rid of this is this is the first the first transceiver that I ever owned, well, HF transceiver, uh, if you discount that, the ELAD. Um, this is the first radio then, put it that way, that I purchased as a transceiver for ham radio work. And um, I just looked on radiomuseum.org, um, which dates this radio to 1996. Now I presume that's the first year that it was available. Now there, there was like, I think there was a Mark II and a Pro and etc. But this is the original version, just the IC756. Um, so it's 1996, which makes it nearly 25 years old, although I don't know how long they were manufacturing them for. So um, I thought it was about 15 years old, but there you go, just goes to show, doesn't it? I've got no idea whatsoever. Um, but it is a great radio. And, um, you know, I, many times I was told that, you know, why bother buying a 7300? Because your 756 will do exactly the same as that radio it just doesn't have all the sort of bells and whistles on it which is probably true um and i'm just trying to tune through 40 now for a signal oh here we go got it wired up to the G5 RV and I've, what I've done actually this time is that I never I've never used it before but I use the um, the matcher or they call it a tuner but the auto matching basically it's not sort of automatic you've got to just press the button and then press it and get and hold it to match the antenna That's the Italian station coming in quite well um, yeah, I'd never used it before. Uh, and the reason for that is that I, I prefer to, to go through a matching unit. So, um, um, but my, uh, my 948 does work perfectly. Um, but it is a bit, uh, it is a bit of a fag to, um, to sort of get, to get the match really, really low, as low as I like it, um, which is basically where the needle 
on the reflective power is doesn't move. Um, so what I've done is I've I've matched the uh, G5 RV manually, and then I've hit the tuner. Uh, on the 756 and then and then tuned it with the radio and matched it through the radio as well so I now have a perfect match and um, yeah I want I, I don't want well it's easily done I think a lot of us have got radios that just sit in the shack and never get used and it's a shame really because this is a radio that is that should be used um, so I'm going to use it this weekend I'm sort of toying with the idea of setting up a second station again in Abingdon. Um, uh, but that's basically what I, where, where this radio came from. So I sort of, when, when I moved QTH, I brought this radio with me um, because I wanted it in my shack. And now I'm sort of looking, and now it doesn't really get any use. And um, yeah, it might be quite nice actually. I've still got a G5RV antenna up uh, uh, in uh, in Abingdon. Um, no radio, no matching unit. And the, um, and the coax I stole to uh, attach my new four meter uh, coaxial uh, vertical dipole that I've just been talking about. So um, I, don't know, I, might, I might do that. I love this radio. I prefer the aesthetics of it actually to the 7300, although I, the 7300 is to be admired as a feat of modern technology that you can't, I mean, the the spectrum scope and the waterfall on that radio just superb but there's something about the uh, kind of uh slightly sort of well i guess it's 90s styling it's, it, to me it's older than that really other than the fact that it's got a, a spectrum scope um yeah i love this radio it's funny isn't it you think about sort of radios with spectrum scopes as being sort of rarely you know fairly sort of new technology or at least I did I mean this is you know if this is one of the early models which it might be um it's 25 years old 20 what, 24 years old potentially um so it just goes to show amazing um so yeah so anyway I'm going to use that radio uh that radio is getting used this weekend um on 20 and 40 I don't do much of that anymore actually I'm too I mean I'm sort of busy but I don't just sit here and work stations on HF. I do the skeds, which I enjoy, we all enjoy. Um, and I listen sometimes. There's a big seal. Good. So, um, yeah, I don't actually do much on HF. Um, I have in the past. I mean, I've got a book full of call signs, um, but um, I, I seem to spend more time just doing the skeds and then obviously working from home. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a bit more of that. Um, the 7300 is the only radio I have with four meters. So um, all my four meter work is going to be done on that radio. Uh, obviously over the weekend and then um, if I decide to do a bit of FT8 it's kind of with the only with the 991 so I've kind of got it all kind of set up now so that's FT8 that's a bit of ad hoc SSB and then that's um, that's four meters uh, two meters and 70 actually SSB um, or FM uh, I also do on the on the ASU. so these three radios have got kind of different jobs but uh, as I said this weekend I'm going to have a play around again with the 756. Um, I don't want it just to sit here gathering dust. I've got a lot of radios, receivers that are sat here gathering dust. I mean, literally ridiculous. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to carry on doing that. The other thing I'm going to do, which I haven't done yet, is I said that I was going to continue testing the brilliant Sony um, ICF EX5 Mark II, and I am um, with an external antenna. And um, what I'm actually going to do, or what I've done already, is I'm going to attach it to my end fed wire that I put up for top band which is basically 36.4 meters of wire um, kind of stretching zigzagging down the garden um, and I'm going to use that with the uh, EX5 Mark II um, later on tonight and probably tomorrow night um, I just had a quick play around with it and the, the trouble is is that in daylight hours you only really hear the strong signals there are some weak signals but um, it, the band is full of very very strong signals so um tonight when there might be an opportunity for dx i'm going to uh i'm going to effectively use this radio with a 36 point something meter long wire now the ferrite 
rod antenna internal antenna doesn't it doesn't sort of switch out of circuit so you end up with that as well in circuits you have to be a bit careful but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go I mean you've seen some of the videos that I've put up already the stability on medium wave with some of these continental stations particularly uh, I think recent I sent one for uh, for an Italian yeah it's uh, is it, uh, Italian station on 900 kilohertz um, uh, R A R A R I is it R A I? Anyway, yeah. Anyway, Italian station nine kilohertz, rock solid. Um, and then I think it was uh, an Algerian station chain three, two or three. Yeah, I mean, just literally with the synchronous detection, just amazing. So I'm going to do some more of that. Um, let's going to sort of have a try a bit harder in terms of what this radio might be able to hear in terms of DX. I'm going to try and copy VOCM. It should be possible. There is the the, the linear tuning on this thing is so is is so good that there is a little gap um around about sort of 590 so if vocm is coming in well one evening i think it's possible to hear it on this radio even though it's analog and you kind of it's linear it's better than the typical analog tuning scale but you're still obviously nowhere near as accurate as a as a, as a, as a digital radio but um yeah i think it's possible i think it, the radio is definitely sensitive enough and particularly with this long wire that i've attached to it so let's see what happens there um the other thing that I've got to do this weekend, although not in the shack, is um, I'm, I've am i agreed to lend one of my Wellbrook Loops ALA1530 to another Harwell club member. Um, so what happened was, before I built my top band antenna, um, I would listen to the guys on top band and I would give them signal reports and so which they were grateful for and then I started giving them signal reports on more than one antenna so I would listen to them on um, you know on one of my Wellbrook loops and then I might try something else but, um, but um, what I didn't have was um, uh, an antenna that you know a wire antenna that obviously would match at top band and um anyway some of the signal reports i was giving these guys on top band with the with the wellbrook loop was was so good that they, two or three of them started to get really interested in it and um and then one or two of them then became less interested in it when they found out how much they cost because they do still cost i think about 250 quid or something um and obviously you can't transmit through them, but um, one of the guys there, a full license holder, uh, Tim, he, he, he's very interested in using a mag loop as a receive antenna and transmit, obviously have a separate TX transmit antenna. Um, now, I offered to lend him mine, basically because I got two of them. So this is the one that I'm going to lend him. And then the other one that I've got is still, you probably can't see very well, but... Uh, it's still kind of like hanging from the fence at the bottom of the garden and it was with that antenna actually that I um, was copying VOCM uh, the other morning um, pretty well actually so um, so yeah so that's my good deed for the club I'm going to lend him my antenna I've said he can sort of borrow it for a while see if he likes it um, and in return actually he's going to lend me an, uh, an antenna for 2 metres and 70 cents um i think it's a diamond manufactured antenna so this is basically an antenna uh with a bit of gain so this is going to be better than the um even better probably than my new collinear that was so kindly uh, built for me by g1zma um so uh i'll be interested to try that and um uh, i mean i do i chat with the with the club members on two meters and 70 centimeters um but otherwise, I spend more time on those bands using FT8. Uh, and so this guy's telling me that this is significantly going to improve the performance of, of my setup on FT8. And obviously, with PSK Reporter, uh, you, you know, you can... The, the distance at which your signal is being heard, decoded, is graphically um, de depicted on a map. So, um, and I know roughly how far my signal gets heard on two meters um, throughout, uh, well, throughout the UK and sort of into Europe, into sort of France, uh, Belgium and the Netherlands, but that's about it. 
Um, so uh, any any sort of significant increase in performance in terms of how far my signal is getting heard because this antenna does have gain is going to be very obvious. So I look forward to that. So that's the other thing I'm doing. And then the other thing that I'm continuing to do is um, study for my uh, full license. Um, and it is hard going. Well, not hard going. It's just heavy going. Um, I'm about two, well, page 60, so sort of nearly two thirds of the way through the book. And right now, um, I'm on the receiver section, section nine. Um, that's a great communications receiver. I haven't got my glasses on, but I'm pretty sure is that this 90, uh, that's a, an, uh, that, that's an icon. Uh, forgotten the uh, number of it i can't see it because i've got my actual glasses on but uh, that's i think they're like about two and a half thousand aren't they um really really nice radio anyway i digress um yeah see uh so i'm, I'm on the receiver section and just going through um uh, super het super heterodyne receiver rf amplifiers mixers local oscillator, IF, choice of IF frequency, intermediate frequency, mixer, circuit, LO, and it's all a little bit heavy going. Fortunately, you don't have to actually remember quite everything. You do have to remember and learn the sections that have got this little mortar board. Um, these are the bits that you have to learn because these are the bits that are potentially examinable, which is, uh, you know, well, it's better than having to learn the whole book because there's an awful lot of information in this book and but yeah it's only there are only parts of it you have to actually remember for um for the exam which is good news because it is a lot there's 100 pages to this book or just over 100 i think it's 103 pages of information you wouldn't particularly want to sort of learn all of that uh, i don't particularly want to um i just want to pass so um i'm going to do what i can to pass um whenever my exam is there's no pressure actually because um the exam um is not it's not actually planned um it's actually kind of what clint why don't you wh why don't you sort of like buy buy the book and um uh why don't you buy the book and start sort of like reading um start reading up and sort of preparing yourself for the exam and maybe there'll be an exam in sort of two or three months uh, so there's no actual pressure um i'm giving myself we've got a committee meeting actually on the 29th um what's the date now so in five days so i'm giving myself i'm setting myself a target of having at least read read completed reading this book by the committee meeting on the 29th so we have got five days to basically finish it we shouldn't be a problem um so yeah sort of hard going quite a lot to learn definitely a lot more to learn than the, than the intermediate um and no comparison obviously to the foundation but that's what it's all about it's meant to be more difficult um i've just looked up this receiver so it's the yeah the r 8600 yeah that's the radio it was that's the radio that i've looked at many times and thought yeah i'd like to buy that but you know i i'm pretty sure that they um i'm just gonna look how much they are actually i'm sort of digressing here but um shopping yeah uh, yeah i was right yeah two and a half thousand <sighs> christ wow amazing so there you go so that's the um that's where i'm at in terms of learning how to be a full-blown uh radio ham um and that's about it really so uh these videos seem to get longer and longer i must be rambling for longer and longer you guys better give me some feedback and tell me if i'm boring you because um this one's gone on for nearly 24 minutes so um but there you go that's it so that's my weekend or at least some of it that's what i'm going to be doing um hope you all keep safe and you know if you've got time you know if you've got time do something on the radio funny actually because I I, I I probably spend more time listening to radio hams than actually doing it myself
that's 40 meters and that's four nothing so there you go i hope you uh enjoyed the uh video keep safe everybody um you know uh find something to do with the radio do the usual thing bit of an experimentation with an antenna chuck a piece of wire at a window whatever it is um you know i'll uh uh i'll certainly be doing some of that anyway so uh and i hope that if nothing else that this video is a just a little bit of inspiration to uh even if it's just switch the radio on and have a listen so anyway all the best have a good weekend uh keep safe and thanks for watching seven three